Rob, for those of you that don't know me. Um, the, as you know, this is Thursday of Passion Week. We've been doing these little devotions all week. And I uh, just want to say thank you for watching. I want to say thank you to my pastor for asking me to be a part of this. And tonight I want to try to tell you a little st story about a man named Naaman and um, how God had great mercy on him and saved his soul. And I want to try to compare that to how, G how God used the cross and Jesus dying on the cross and shedding his blood for our great mercy. Um, just a little background. Um, in 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1, um, it says, Naaman was the captain of the host of the king of Syria. Um, he was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given great deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor. But he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover. So, Naaman ended up taking this maid's advice. Um, he went to his leader, the king, um, and he got a letter all drawn up, nice and political, and uh, took, gathered up his money. And uh, we see in verse 6 and 7 where he goes back to is Israel, to the king, um, and in verse 6, it says, He brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now, when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman, my servant, to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass, when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent his clothes and said, El my God, to kill and make alive that this man doth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy. Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. Now the king was not spiritual, didn't believe in God or even acknowledge God. So of course he panicked. He was thinking the king of Syria He's just trying to stir up some more trouble. So he started freaking out. Now the preacher hears about the going on, goings on, and he figures, hey, uh, he better step in and handle the situation before things got way out of hand. So it says in verse 8, And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. And in verse 10 it says, Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Now this promise was not rational, and it certainly wasn't negotiable. Naaman left all tore up. He, not what he expected. No magic, no formula, no portion. Just obedience demanded by the man of God. He was thinking the Jordan River for crying out loud. It was a very nasty, muddy part of the river where they were. Now, leprosy was a loathsome, humiliating disease. Disgraced, I mean, it just disgraced a human being. 
and its outside effects were only part of the suffering. Leprosy also affected the mucous membranes of the nose and the lungs. Absolute misery. No better picture for a hopeless sinner. So here we see this great man brought down by his condition that he or anyone else was powerless to change. But God did change him. We read in verse 14 where he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan and he was clean. Came again like, and his flesh came again unto the flesh of a little child and he was clean. So after believing and obeying the word of God, Naaman was a good man, a healed man, a converted man, a thankful man, and he professed the one true God. In verse 17, Naaman said to Elisha, I pray thee, be given to thy servant two mules, burden of earth, for thy servant will henceforth offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifice unto other gods, but unto the Lord. Now in the NIV version, because I know it's a little tough for some of y'all to understand the King James, it says, please let me, your servant, be given as much earth as a pair of mules can carry, for your servant will never again make burnt offerings and sacrifices to any other God but the Lord. He was a converted man. man God not only healed him, but he saved him that day. I find it cool And here's where I'm going to try to tie this together. Naaman was told to dip seven times in a muddy, nasty river to cleanse himself of his sin and make himself whole. And a bloody, nasty cross on Calvary cleansed our sins and made us whole. Ephesians 1.7 says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, Jesus was a good man. Matter of fact, he was a perfect man. And as a man, he was nailed to an old rugged cross. And he bled for us. That blood on that cross washed away all our sins. Jesus gives his grace and salvation freely to any and all who will receive it. And like Naaman, there may be some out there who have those underlying problems that you can't fix. And hey, I feel you. I've been there. Believe me. You can't do it on your own. Believe me. You have to give it to God. But he has a promise for you tonight. If you want it, you can have it. This promise has always been the same for everybody. And it always will. And it's non-negotiable. All you have to do is repent of your sins, ask Jesus into your heart, and be baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus. 
to wash all your sins away. Acts 2.38 says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now understand, we're in some unusual times right now, and it may be difficult to make all this happen at the same time, but it does have to be done. And the point I'm trying to drive home is this. If you don't remember anything else I say, remember this, friends. Just being a good person isn't good enough. If you're lost tonight and you want to be whole, all you have to do is simply admit that you're a sinner and you can't go on alone. And you need Jesus to come into your life and be your personal savior. And Jesus will save you, my friend. You can simply go into another room and say it silently or go somewhere private and yell at the top of your lungs. Either way, Jesus can hear you. And if you're saved tonight, great. Please see that there are those around you hopelessly sick in their sin and need Jesus Christ. Remember what Jesus did for you You sought him, and he came to you. Go find someone and be that little maid and tell them about hope and where it can be found. I hope this has blessed someone tonight. And please don't forget tomorrow is Good Friday and Sunday is Easter, also known as Resurrection Day. I pray God's blessings on you and your families. And may the love and peace of God go with you wherever you are. God bless.